I'm Anne Lewis from Companies House UK. I'm here to talk to you about our transformation programme. Now, while technology and digital is very important for this programme, we see technology as the enabler, not necessarily the transformation. So, I've taken a line from what Sean did yesterday, and we've, I've picked some quotes that I quite like from the internet. Um, so, reading this out to you, the common question that gets asked in business is why? That's a good question, but an equally valid question is why not? So, my question to you, does anybody know either the company or the person that said that? No? Nope? Well, I'll tell you then. Um, it's Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Now, the reason I've chosen this is because we do not want to go and just digitise what we're currently doing. This is about going back to basics and asking us this question, why not? Why shouldn't we do something? So we're really going back to basics here. So what I'm just going to cover with you today is a, a very brief reminder of what we are in Companies House and what we're not. Um, I'm going to go through our strategic goals and some of our success criteria. A very a one-page outline vision that we're currently sharing with our staff and with our stakeholders, and some of the work streams that we're currently working on. So here's a reminder about Companies House. We don't hold business names uh, like other registries, or we don't do any insolvency, or um, we're purely incorporate and dissolve limited companies. Uh, we see our role is to make um, business in the UK as simple and easy as possible and to make sure that all the filing information is up to date. Now, we have been in existence since 1844. We've currently got 4 million companies on our register. We reached those heights earlier this year. On average, we do about 600,000 incorporations and um, 400,000 dissolutions. So we're currently growing at a rate of about 200,000 um, companies a year. So uh, compliance is very important to us. Our compliance levels at the moment for our annual return and for our accounts are over 98%. And we have over 2 billion searches on our data. We saw lots of examples well, just earlier and yesterday where our data is used quite widely out there. That's, that's roughly about 16 million um, searches every day. So, what are our goals? Quite simple, really. I've just, I'm, I'm not planning on reading them out. I'm sure you can read those yourselves. But they're around our customers. They're around data, around integrity. It's very important. And around culture. Now, I'm sure you've all experienced some great customer service and, and great digital services out there. But when can we last say that from the start of the journey to the end of the journey, it's been superb? That's what we're aiming for. That's what we're hoping to achieve. Our data, um, we've done some work. Some of you will have heard me speak in Botswana about some of the work that we've done on the known problems that we have on our data, um, where we've sort of corrected addresses and directors' information. But we've got a lot more to do in that space, and we want to concentrate on that. But most importantly for me, we can't achieve any, any of that without great staff and great people and a fantastic culture. So we want to um, get an environment where our staff can do the very best that they can, and we're going to set high, high standards for those staff. So that's what it's all about. So there's the three themes and strategies that we're working on, a people strategy, a customer strategy, and a data strategy. So what are our critical success factors? Clearly they align um, with, the, with the goals and around data and culture, but I just wanted to pick up on something that Julian said yesterday. Julian posed the question to one of the panel members on whether we saw that in the future we wouldn't have any staff in the registries. The way we see it is that by digitising and automated, we do plan and hope to get smaller. The bottom line is very important to us. We're looking for return on investment. We are self-funding, like some other registries, so that's very, very important to us. But we also see that the jobs will change. They'll be more considerative. We'll be doing far more analysis, far more in the integrity area. 
As an example, when I started in Companies House in 2009, my directorate had over 700 staff. Currently, we've just over 500 staff. The register's grown by over a million, but I didn't have an integrity unit. I now have over 150 staff working on integrity and enforcement. So already the jobs have started changing and we see this continuing in the future. But what's really also important is good leadership. This is gonna be a huge change for our staff. So our staff are gonna need support. We need leaders with clear vision who can actually paint the end state and take the staff with them. I mentioned earlier about a one pager, our vision. The end's missing off there for some reason. It's on mine. I don't know where the end's gone, anyway. Um, so, sorry? I know. I can assure you the end is on mine. So I don't know where it's gone. Anyway, um, the UK Civil Service um, has a strap line about the brilliant, brilliant civil service, so we've linked it in with that. So it's quite simple. It's about brilliant people using brilliant systems to deliver um, brilliant services. So what I'm going to talk to you next is a little bit about some of the um, work um, areas under each of those. So I have another quote for you, one of my favourites. The heart and soul of a company is creativity and innovation. Anybody know that? No? From Walt Disney. Um, the reason I like that is because, for me, people, it's all around being creative and innovative. When I started, again, I'm going to go back to the past, I spoke to the then registrar, Gareth, and I was very clear, clear, clear that I wanted to do continuous improvement and lean, and that's what we've been doing. We want to have a culture of innovation, empowerment. Now, we've done a lot, but we've still got a lot more to do, so that's why I've chosen that. Now, the people strand looks very looks, looks easy, doesn't it? This is going to be absolutely massive for us. I've already spoken about the culture and leadership. But we're going to be doing some work on the target operating model, and I'm sure you all know what that's the end state, that's where we want to be. We're currently planning and mapping out our as-is, where we are now, and we're going to be doing some work on what we want to be in the future. But to give you a flavour of some of the things we've recently done, just to put into context of where we're going, about a year ago we merged our compliance areas in with our operating areas. This gave us economies of scale. It meant that if there was a peak, we, it was easy and scalable. It also meant that there was less customer contact and more efficiencies. And most importantly, it helped improve our compliance levels. Those are the sort of things that we're going to be continuing to look at and develop over the next few months. And clearly, our staff are going to need a lot of support, a lot of training, retraining. We want them to be looking more on the analysis side, not picking up the phones and processing. So there's a lot of work to do in that area. Not quite sure if you could see that one. Um, can you see it? I'll read it out anyway. I always did something I was a little not ready to do. I think that's how you grow. When there's that moment of, wow, I'm not sure I can really do this, and you push through those moments, that's when you have a breakthrough. So why have I chosen this? Well, this is really about where we want to go with our systems. We want to be ambitious. And this one was by Frederick Smith from FedEx. <coughs> so brilliant systems. Sounds great, doesn't it? What I'm really talking about here is our internal systems. Now, I think it's fair to say, and of course I would say this, I think our external systems are quite good, and we've concentrated over the past few years on legislative change and the external systems. But it's now time to actually upgrade some of our internal processing systems. So one of the big things for us is bringing in a state-of-the-art um, CRM system where we want all of our staff, not just our customer facing staff, to have the latest position on the customer. So if any of us have got any contact points with them, we can see the complete history, filings, everything, and deal with it in one go. Now, as I said, also our infrastructure, which we affectionately call CHIPS, 
which is uh, the company's house internal processing system, that eventually will be replaced. So that's another big piece of work for us. But another area I wanted to talk to you about was data science. Now, yesterday, um, the lady from Global Witness talked about how she was using all of our data and that how they'd employed um, data scientists to, to use that data. But what we want to do is actually do some more of that ourselves. So I'm sure you're all aware that data science is about exploiting that really powerful information that we've all got on our database. It's about harnessing it. It's about taking probability, mathematics, statistics, um, computer science, psychology. It's an amazing thing. You bring it all together and you start looking at this data. Now, in Companies House, now we've recently recruited um, a few data science experts and we've merged them in with our analysis team. So we're actually looking at this area as part of our data strategy. So what, what things might we do? Well, fundamentally, what we need to do is when we design our new computer systems, we make sure that data and management information is at the forefront of what we're thinking about. It's not an add-on at the end, but the architecture of how we build everything has that in mind. So that's a big change for us. So the second area we want to do is we want to automate things more. We want to have efficiencies, we want to have standard practice, in reduce risk. One of the things we're looking at at the moment, we do data suppressions manually. We're looking to do that in an automated way, which should not only reduce cost, but improve and reduce risk. So the third area we're looking at is exploiting all that data that's out there on the internet. We have quite an active customer base um, on Twitter, so what we want to do is get that data in, look at it, have an understanding of what our customers um, are saying about us and have much better customer insight. Another area is in analysis and optimization. What we want to do is exploit all those different tools so my staff will have at their fingertips some of those wonderful things that you saw yesterday um, from um, the global witness so they can have heat maps, they can have a look at the data, they can look at trends and make better and more informed decisions. We're also looking at artificial intelligence, trying to bring that in and one of the things we're actively working on at the moment is a way of um, standard industrial classification. Um, we currently collect and that's a drop-down box for businesses to use. What we're looking at is a coding tool so businesses will just be able to code in what they do and up it will come. That's the sort of areas we're looking at for that. And then finally in this area, and I think it links again to some of the things we said yesterday, is we're looking at linking our data more, um, both across the UK in terms of other government departments, but equally across the registries, because I think that's very powerful as well. We've started looking at this and we've, we've compared some of our data with the land registry, but we're, we're currently looking at this field as well. So the last quote, um, very simple one. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all of us, when we got up in the morning, we'd found our portion and going into work was no longer work? Now, the reason I've chosen that one um, is because, just to show the level of ambition that we have. So that was by Antonio Reed from Epic Records. So, final part I want to talk to you about is brilliant services. Now, you've heard me made reference to Companies House Service. This is, we brought this in a few years ago, and this enabled us to do the free data. And we've done this in an iterative way, working with our customers. We need to continue doing this and move all our filing onto this system. I also talked to you about our aspirations on a CRM system, but what we're currently thinking about is our contact model. At the moment, we have over one and a half million um, contacts in our contact centre. Now, while we have high levels of customer satisfaction here, actually, it's probably a failing, because if our systems are truly brilliant, you shouldn't need to contact us, and that's where we want to go to. So we're actually looking through all of that and seeing where we want to go. We want our guidance to be embedded. We want our guidance to be just in time and simple. We don't want long, um, complicated explanations. We just want it all to be really simple and embedded. So that's where we're going on that. And then finally, digital co communications. We do um, communicate digitally. We do email reminders, those sort of things. But we still do a lot on paper. 
So one of the things that we're also looking to is transform what we do in our communication. So that is it from me. So just to thank you all for listening, and I'll take any questions later. Thank you. And thank you very much. Rico, are you your next?